Alex Steele. Welcome to Bloomberg Commodities Edge, where we focus on the companies, physical assets, and the trading behind the hottest commodities with the smartest voices in the business. Time now for Commodity and Cheaper. We talked to one executive in the commodity world, and today is Cormac Kinney, founder and CEO of Diamond Standard. Buying a diamond can be very hard work. Miners sell rough cuts to manufacturers who polish the diamond, which is then certified and sold to a dealer who then sells it to you. Enter Diamond Standard, which IPO'd back in March. It's trying to create an easier, faster way to own and trade that glittery gem. Now, the star is the Diamond Standard coin. Each one has the same carat weight, color, and clarity, and is identified by a blockchain token or wireless chip embedded on the back of each coin. So here's how it works. The company buys the diamonds at auctions, creates these equal coins, and then sells them to investors. Now, the first ones were priced for sale at $5,000, and the company announced uh, an additional $50 million worth of coins in five tranches of $10 million each. Now, the first bunch is going to cost $5,750 per coin, and each additional series will price right at market rates. Diamond Standard also has an ETF coming to the NICE, and soon you could trade Diamond Futures. They are approved to list on the MGEX through CME Globex, both awaiting the green light from regulators. So I recently sat down with Cormac Kimmy, uh, founder and CEO of Diamond Standard, and asked him about the addressable market. Diamonds are the forgotten commodity. If you look at gold, silver, platinum, palladium, even rhodium, Investors own at least 15% of the global above ground supply. However, institutional investors own nearly 0% of diamonds. Now that we've made diamonds liquid, fungible, very low transaction friction, public price discovery, and regulator approved with the futures, we've also filed an ETF. We believe that institutional and individual investors will acquire 15% of the supply of diamonds. I don't know how long that takes, but that's almost $200 billion worth. What's the liquidity like for what you guys have going on right now? What's fascinating about the coins is that they're all the same. So it's like gold where we don't set the price, the market does. Right now there's only $125 million approved by our regulators. We expect to get that increase to about 500 million by the end of the year, and we'll continue supplying the, the commodity to the market. And as we do, that liquidity will build. What's it like to get the diamonds? Because all of this is gonna be predicated on you guys getting enough supply. So that was the huge challenge. Uh, the way we make the commodity is, is very interesting. We are the world's first and only market maker for loose diamonds. And we actually bid on a regular basis on 16 million varieties of diamonds. and. We can't buy 16 million diamonds, but we do buy a public and statistically valid sample of all 16 million. There's never been an electronic diamond exchange. So we built one, which is the Diamond Standard Exchange, in partnership with about 100 of the world's largest diamond vendors. And so far, we've made over a million bids on that exchange, and we've bought tens of thousands of diamonds from eight countries around the world so far. Can we consider diamonds green? How does this fit in with the world's decarbonization and also ESG push? Yeah. What's super interesting to me is that 75% of all the diamonds that will ever exist are already owned by consumers. The new supply of diamonds is only about 40 billion a year compared to 1.2 trillion above ground. We have to buy over time, the majority of our diamonds from consumers. So we're benefiting every single person who's inherited a diamond or gotten divorced or simply didn't use their jewelry anymore because we're creating much more price discovery, liquidity, and fairness when we buy back diamonds. How important is finding, is being able to source, track, et cetera, where your diamond comes from and all, and all of that? How does that factor in? We're very much cleaning up the entire diamond supply chain. Because we're regulated, we force all of our suppliers to be ESG compliant, anti-slavery, which is a serious problem still, and um, adhere to the Kimberly process, for example, to avoid any conflict diamonds. So we believe that we're really benefiting all members of that supply chain. 
That was my interview with Cormac Kinney, Diamond Standard CEO. Wraps it up for Bloomberg Commodities Edge. Catch us every Thursday, 1 p.m. in New York, 6 p.m. in London. This is Bloomberg.